How's everybody doing today? And as you can see, we are doing a Philadelphia Phillies rebuild. And we're doing that because Bryce Harper just signed a 13, mil 13 year, $330 million deal. Absolutely massive. So if you guys are absolutely if you guys are excited about this video hit that like button down below subscribe if you're new and enjoy the content and as always make sure you let me know in the comment section below what you guys think about this deal is it good for harper is it good for the phillies is it good for both you know you know are you excited about it do you think it was a bad deal just let me know what you guys think down below so let's get into this video i'm pretty excited because to be honest i'm just relieved that harper signed with somebody but at the same time i don't really understand it there's a there's a no trade clause which is pretty um normal nowadays for big players there's a no trade clause but there's no opt-outs so really the only way harper's getting out of philadelphia is if he asks for a trade and you know don't get me wrong philadelphia is in a like full-blown like we are going to spend money we're going to win where it's a, a must win mentality like we are going all out to win but the biggest question mark was their pitching and they really haven't strengthened their pitching too much this offseason so before we talk about this team anymore let's get into you know first we need to add bryce harper to the team through free agency and then i'll show you the roster and then we'll get into this rebuild all right so pitching wise like i've mentioned I, like i think the phillies really have question marks in their pitching you know most of their starters last year had a high three or they had a four era which is just not good enough in the majors nowadays so you you know you have nola but outside of that you really don't have anybody that you can rely consistently on arietta hasn't been the same since he left the cubs and when you look at velasquez pavetta eflin eikoff they're just they're not good enough right now and you know you have a couple names in the minors adonis medina is one of them but he's not ready to step up to the bigs yet so starting pitching is the big question mark for the Phillies in the bullpen yes you've added David Robertson you have Pat Neshek you have Ramos you have a couple other players who again there's okay pitching but there's not anyone that you're really like they're gonna lock down you know pitching and we're gonna be okay Sir Anthony Dominguez had a great year last year but can he do it again this year you know last year was his first year you know batters have seen him more often now they may start to pick up on things but who knows what's going to happen i think phillies have a big question mark in the pitching you know pitching department that i don't know if that's you know their offense is going to be good enough to win them a lot of games and they they're in a win now mentality so that's how we're going to take this rebuild we're going to make a lot of moves and we're going to make sure this team is a contender for a world a world series in season one or season two so jt real muto i think is a great acquisition best catcher in baseball one of the best players in baseball currently and for Sixto sanchez and jorge alfaro as the two big pieces in that trade i think picking up real muto great bit of business there first baseman i know isn't reese hoskins but i think with the acquisition of harper now there's a little bit of a jam like a little bit of a there's there's just too many outfielders now so maybe move hoskins back to first you know you have cesar hernandez at second third base you have alec Baum for the future michael franco still trying to prove that he's you know a consistent third baseman that you can rely on you have gene segura which is a good acquisition from the mariners you know a decent shortstop pretty consistent you know he's not gonna wow you a lot of the times but he's he's going to do what is expected of him scott kingery still trying to live up to, for the hype and then you got archimedes gamboa in the minors who's actually you know looking pretty promising odubel herrera in center you know roman quinn's got some speed i'm not really sold on odubel herrera you know he started off last season really hot and then he kind of just disappeared um defensively not amazing so he's got some question marks around him for me bryce harper and right now Andrew McCutcheon, a great pickup um, for a veteran leader, you know, still still decent and um, still has got a point to prove that he can, you know, contribute in the bigs. So maybe move him to left and you have Nick Williams as your platoon outfielder this year. Aaron out there probably going to be traded by me and Dylan Cozens for the future could be good, but I'm probably going to trade him. He's got potential. He's got some trade trade value. And because we're in a win now mentality. We're going to be making a lot of moves. All right, so I'm going to try to go for players that I normally don't go for. And I know I've traded for John Gray in the past, but he's one of the better pitchers that we can get who's going to help us immediately. Um, I looked at names like um, Jameson uh, Tyen. I always mess up his name. I've looked at him. I just 
couldn't get him without trading away a player that I didn't want to get rid of that would help us win now. And another name I went after was, um, oh, it was a teammate of John Gray. It was Kyle Freeland. Um, but they wanted just a little bit too much. So we're going to go for John Gray here. Pat Neshek, Malquin Canelo, and Davey Grullon is going to be the players that are going to make making way to get a new starter who I think is definitely going to help that starting rotation. We're going after Ryan Presley of the Astros. Not necessarily a name I'm too, like, is too hyped about in real life, but you guys have always are like, go after players you don't, um, you don't really go for. So I'm trying to switch it up. And he's 29 years old, 85 overall, decent stats, final year of his contract. So if it doesn't go well, we'll just trade him. But I'm going for high rated players who are going to help us. And because we just traded for a starter, um, Jared Eikhoff is kind of extra. And we're getting rid of two low-rated players. It's a good. It's 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 potentially a really good deal for us, or just a, a rental player for now that's going to help us in the bullpen. Alrighty, so we're going for Jamison Tyon for Kevin Gowdy, Zach Eflin, and Dylan Cozens. I did say I wanted to trade Dylan Cozens because he does have some trade value, um, and we do have a little bit of a jam in the outfield. Um, Zach Eflin's being traded because we just acquired John Gray, and now our starting rotation is looking a little bit star, uh, stronger. Um, let's get. Jameson over here. He'll take Pavetta's spot. And then it's looking a little bit stronger. Tyon will definitely go up in rating. We have a little bit extra um, bullpen arms here. So we'll move a couple down. And I think for the first season, we're looking pretty pretty strong. Alrighty, so after those trades, this is what we're working with. Decent. It's looking okay. Um, we, we've made three changes so far. We added um, Ryan Presley in the bullpen along with John Gray and Jamison Tyon. The bull, the lineup is looking the same, um, obviously with the addition of Bryce Harper. And I'm going to let them go until at least the trade deadline, see how it goes. Um, I'm not going to focus on scouting or the draft this season, mostly because I don't think any player that we draft is going to make it into the team in season two. And because I want this to be a win now mentality rebuild, I don't really want to focus on the draft now i want to focus on players who are going to make an immediate impact so really the weak link is third base when you're looking at the team and depending on how he plays the first half of the season i might look for a new third baseman so let's get into this season and see how it goes already at the deadline you guys can see we are 69 and 38 we have a five game lead above the nets nets oh wow the mets holy smokes we have a five game lead um about yeah we have a five game lead on the mets man my oof, I, I promise i can speak english but you guys can see we're doing pretty good um one of the best records in baseball currently and the team looks solid aaron nola not a bad year you guys can see the stats there arietta actually doing pretty solid i was a little hesitant on keeping him seeing how he would do but he's actually performing quite well john gray not a bad three starter vince velasquez four five starter most likely based on those stats and jameson tyan only 82 rated so he's only gone up one but his stats are really solid um a, a sub three era um whips pretty solid and looking at his his stats he's actually doing quite well um, I'm surprised he hasn't gone up more than he actually has. Um, Jose Alvarez, not doing too well in the long relief role. Nicasio is actually not doing too horribly. Arano, I hope he continues to develop and gets a little bit better. Um, just because we we need that bullpen help. Ramos, yikes. Um, high ERA. His stats are going up, but that's not what I want to see. Hector Neris is doing okay. Presley... The experiment doesn't look like it's going too well with him. Sir Anthony Dominguez is looking pretty solid in that setup role. And David Robertson looks like he's doing okay in the closing role. 38 saves and only four blown. Can't really complain about that. Gene Segura is looking like an okay shortstop right now. 269 average, but a decent on-base percentage is what I want to see. Cesar Hernandez, 87 overall still. Pretty solid. On base percentage could be a little bit higher, but I'm not going to complain at all. Reese Hoskins in the three spot is up to a 93 overall. And you guys can see, pretty solid year. Pretty solid year, I would say. Bryce Harper um, is hitting 283. Not bad at all. You know, 382 on base percentage. He's up to a 94. JT Realmuto is up to an 86. Or, you know, pretty pretty similar rating. 
but he's having a really solid year as well. Michael Franco, 258 average, not amazing, but a pretty good on-base percentage. I guess I can't complain. It's his best average um, so far in like a full season. And we'll have to see how he continues to hit the ball. I'll give him this season. If it doesn't go much better, we'll probably look for a third baseman who's really going to push us and get us make us better. Nick Williams is developing still. Odubel Herrera, 270, which, I mean, I'm not going to complain about that. And a decent on-base percentage. And Andrew McCutcheon is actually having a solid year. So keeping him around, not a bad little move. Scott Kingery is still developing, so um, I'm thinking once he hits like the 82 mark, if Gene Segura starts to dip or Cesar Hernandez starts to dip, we'll move one of them and use Kingery. But for now, I'm thinking the team is looking really solid, and I'm liking what I'm seeing. Um, I don't know if I want to make a move just yet. Maybe a bullpen arm, but that would be it. Because like I said, offensively, we look really good and the team was set up for success it was pitching that was the big question mark so let's see if we can find another arm to just make this team even stronger Alrighty, tommy canely of the yankees is going to be joining us for ryan presley that experiment's just not working and why not go for a player i haven't tried his writing's decent and to be honest he's most likely going to be a rental just because three million he's gonna be an arbitration oh maybe we maybe we will keep him actually I didn't notice he had arbitration. I thought it was just the end of his contract. So this actually could be a really good pickup for us. Um, he's normally a hit or miss player. I've gotten him in previous franchise rebuilds that I've done off like by myself just to kind of test players. And he either does really well or does really bad. Currently, he's at an 89 overall. So to be honest, he could really, really help us. And that really... Like, even just that one player makes us look a lot stronger. So, let's see how the rest of the season goes. And um, I'll catch you guys then. So, as you can see, we won the division 102 wins and 60 losses. We'll be taking on the winner of the wild card game. And let's go see how we finished. We had a nine game lead on the Mets. The Mets and the Nationals were actually the wild card teams. The Reds took the Central two games by the Cubs, the Dodgers. And then looking at the American League, you guys can see that there. League leaders, Jake Arrieta, Robertson, Nola, and Nola. So six shutouts and six complete games for, for Nola. David Robertson had 53 saves on the year, and Arrieta had the best winning percentage. JT Riamuto, second best in batting average there. So pretty solid. It's, we didn't win any awards, which is disappointing to see. But let's see how the team did. Gene Segura almost hit 300, and... Good home run production and ribbies for a leadoff hitter. 29 stolen bases as well. Almost a 370 on base percentage. He actually surprised me. I didn't think he was going to do that well. Cesar Hernandez, not a horrible year either. Down year from the previous two, but still pretty, pretty reliable there. Reese Hoskins. These are numbers I can get behind for a three hitter. Definitely like that. Bryce Harper is up to a 94. Almost 40 homers. 110 ribbies. 280 average, still not horrible, but you guys can see the on-base percentage there, pretty solid as well. JT Realmuto's gone up, and that's what I'm talking about. Best catcher in baseball, good run produ production, good average, and a really good on-base percentage. Michael Franco, best year, you know, in terms of average and on-base percentage, but for an 82 overall, his hitting stats aren't that good, and for a team that wants to win now, I think we need a new third baseman. Nick Williams definitely showing that he can produce, continue to be that platoon outfielder. Odubel Herrera, not a bad year actually. A player that I wasn't too sold on, did pretty well. And Andrew McCutcheon, he even did pretty well. So I'm going to see how Andrew McCutcheon, his rating is going to be next season. Because if it's gonna drop i might trade him but for right now i'm pretty content on keeping him in the lineup scott kingery is all right and these two you know he's my backup catcher andrew knapp but sean rodriguez i don't want to keep around he's going to be aging he's going to be decreasing aaron nola that don't like to see his overall went down but those are good numbers i like seeing that six complete game shutouts unreal arietta that's numbers i want to see those are just 
or those are numbers I want to see. Wow, that's numbers. Those are numbers I want to see. That's beautiful. John Gray, not bad. Jamison Tyon, really good. And Vince Velasquez, those are five starter numbers. Um, that ERA and stuff, but still, you know, almost 200 strikeouts, 177 innings. I'm not going to complain about that. This is looking like a stronger rotation than the Phillies currently have in real life, and I'm liking that. Jose Alvarez, we're probably going to need a new like pitcher for the bullpen there. Nicasio, he's going down, so we're probably going to need to replace him as well. But overall, I mean, I'm not going to complain. Tommy Canely, wow. He only pitched five innings since we traded for him. Um, but that's, that's not good. <laughs> um, I'm going to keep him around for uh, another season because, you know, he's still under 30 and he's going to, he's, he should increase in rating and he should get more, um, more innings as the seasons continue. Sir Anthony Dominguez looks good and so does David Robertson. So overall the pitching surprised me this year. They did quite well and it shows the offense was was the big contributor with this team. I think the pitching still needs to strengthen a little bit more, but the lineups definitely, definitely pretty strong. So looking at the farm system, Pavetta, we let him in the minors for this year. He's almost up to an 80. And looking at the rest of the, you know, the pitchers, nothing too exciting down here. Um, so I'm not really gonna show them. Nothing for catching or first base. Second base, you have Valentine. Um, you have Walding and Bomb here. Walding's actually overtaken Bomb. Uh, you got Gamboa, and then Quinn's still in the minors, and we traded away Covens. But outside of that, prospects are looking a little, little, little scarce in terms of this season. So playoff pictures right there. Let's get into it. Let's see who we're gonna be taking on here. We're gonna be taking on the Nationals, Harper's former team. Let's see how it goes. We lost the first game. That's not good. We lost the second game too. It's up to John Gray in this elimination game. What, like, what are the odds that we take on the Nationals and it's down to this Vince Velasquez? Hmm. He's he was he was he was tempted me to start him just based on his rating. So let's see how this goes. Segura starts us off right, and then three strikeouts. Man. Ooh, this is not looking good. Can we get out of this one? We do. That's a good... There we go. Come on. Let's... Dozier. Okay. Dozier with the Nationals. Let's see. A double for Nick Williams. A sack bunt. Perfect. Segura. Hernandez. Man, we've had... We've had opportunities. We just haven't capitalized on them. And they do. They have a one nothing lead. That's not... We're just... We're not taking advantage of it. Come on, Franco. Nothing. Herrera walks. Williams double play. Really? Hmm. We're lim I'm gonna let John Gray go because it's still a one-run game. Okay, okay. Harper singles. Okay. Real Muto singles. First and second. Franco. Fielder's choice. Okay. Sack fly. Strikes out. Are you serious? Really? Alright, we're 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 low on opportunities here. We're going to let McCutcheon come in. He grounds out. Okay. Inning alive still. Come on. There we go. Harper, this is your chance. <sighs> um, Eighth inning. Can't really mess around here. We, we got to do something. This is our last at bats. Can we do it? Single. That's a good start. Franco. Single. Even better. Herrera. Fielder's choice, mm. fly out, pinch hit. It comes down to Kingery. Oh man, and that that's it. We lost to the Nationals. That's unfortunate. Eight hits, zero runs. They only had two hits that entire game, and we get eliminated. So let's. The pitching did well. And the Nationals actually won the World Series. So Harper leaves and the National win the Nationals win the World Series. Interesting. So let's get into the offseason and let's see what we can do. Alrighty, so everybody got arbitration here except for Cowgill. And then looking at the contracts. Um everybody should get one. Maybe not Altair. But everybody else should get one. 
Alrighty, so to start season two, we're reuniting Chris Bryant and Bryce Harper. Chris Bryant's joining us for Scott Kingery. That's the big piece of this trade. And Mitch Walden. I am not sold on Michael Franco. He's going to be moving to the bench as a bench bat. And um, yeah, <laughs> this is a pretty big move for us. Um, we'll see how it goes. It really makes us a lot stronger team and i'm just flabbergasted that it happened um i didn't really want to trade scott kingery but his hitting stats just aren't good enough for a sim style franchise and adding a bat like chris bryant i'm gonna take that trade Alrighty, so we're going to the cardinals here to pick up carlos martinez who says in real life he's going to start but we're gonna have to see how that goes we're also getting dexter fowler because that's the only way we could get this deal to go through. We're trading McCutcheon because he actually dipped in rating in the offseason along with Roman Quinn and Cole Irvin. Um, we're going to move Martinez to a starter, which I normally don't do this. Mostly because it's kind of cheating. It actually is cheating. But in real life, he says he is going to start. Um, and what I'm going to do, I'm not going to make his stamina amazing i'm just gonna put it at 75 because he is still plagued by injuries but he's saying he's gonna start so let's just see how he does um as a starter so we're just gonna we're gonna make him a starter if you guys have a problem with it let me know i'll never do that again but he's saying he's going to start so the cardinals want him to be a starter we're gonna try him out as a starter so after those two big trades this is what the team's looking like our bench doesn't have the kingery um like it did last year but it will have michael franco coming off the bench this is the lineup it looks really good we added chris bryant and then the rotation we're gonna put vince velasquez as a long reliever and see how it goes the bullpen's looking good the rotation's looking good let's see how season two goes so season two at the deadline we're looking really strong here you guys can see 74 and 32 15 games ahead of the mets so looking at the rest of the league we're easily the best team um going into the deadline day you guys can see the team here is looking really good bryce harper a little bit of a down year compared to last year but everybody else is looking really good nick williams has taken over and left he's actually having a pretty solid year Chris Bryant's hitting 322. Oof. The year is looking solid. Even Michael Franco's having a decent year as kind of our pinch hitter slash bench bat. And oof, that lineup is looking dangerous. The lowest amount of home runs is an eight. And that's our pinch hitter. Real Muto has nine. Oof. That is a dangerous looking offense. Looking at the rest of the team, you guys can see it's it's strong. Our highest ERA is 3-3-3 in the starting rotation. Whew. Looking at the bullpen, even there, it's... Okay, Thomas Canely is looking a little, little like a weak spot. David Robinson's kind of having some issues in the closing role, maybe? Yeah, a little bit. We're going to swap him out with Dominguez. And maybe just find a replacement for Canely. Otherwise, this team is looking really dangerous. Alrighty, we're trading for another Yankees pitcher in Dellen Betances for Tommy Canely and these two guys. Normally, wouldn't trade a Yankees player back to the Yankees, but let's do it anyways. And that's really the only trade I want to make, and we'll see how it goes for the rest of the season. Everybody else is doing really good. The offense looks super scary. There's no point in making too many changes. Let's finish off the season. So as you can see, 106 and 56, we won our division. And again, taking on the wild card team, which proved to be an issue last year. Chris Bryant and Bryce Harper seem to go off. And you can see Jake Arrieta, actually the most shutouts. MVP was Chris Bryant. Um, Bryce Harper had the Hank Aaron Award, but you can see Chris Bryant's here. Pretty solid. Can't complain about that. But looking at the team, pitching-wise... Looks really strong. Carlos Martinez, whew, very dangerous. And then overall, can't complain. I was really worried about Jake Arrieta this year, but he had even a better year than last year, which is crazy to think about. And then looking at the bullpen, you guys can see a couple of stragglers with high ERAs, but 
Usually relievers are kind of expected to have around a three or higher because they don't pitch as much, but really solid from the team. And looking at the stats, Gene Segura even got better from last year, which is crazy to think about. Cesar Hernandez hit the ball really well. 402 on base percentage. Bryce Harper definitely heated it up towards, or definitely picked it up in the second half of the season. You guys can see that. Reese Hoskins got a little bit lower average, a little bit better run production though. Um, Chris Bryant, pff, 40 more ribbies than the previous year and did really well. JT Realmuto seems to, ooh, yeah, he really dipped this season. Nick Williams is doing okay. Um, he kind of fell off this second half of the season. Odubo Herrera was pretty consistent um, from last year. More homers, though, and more stolen bases. Um, base percentage went up a little bit. And Michael Franco is finally starting to grow a little bit. So it's looking like the lineup is doing pretty solid. Pitching is looking very scary, finally. And let's see, when you look at the playoff picture... We're going to be taking on the Diamondbacks or the Mets. And it's looking like the Nationals didn't make it this year. 21 games out in the East. And looking at the rest of the teams you guys can see here. We're looking like, again, a very strong team. Um, we're second best in terms of rankings. The Yankees are ahead of us. So let's see who we're going to take on here. In the playoffs, we're taking on the Mets. Ooh, divisional opponent. Let's do this. Let's go. Game one, we won. Game two, we won. Game three, we lost. And we're taking on the Dodgers in the NLCS. So let's get into this one. I'm feeling good. Let's get a rotation back to, you know, who should be where. Um, Let's do that. Yeah, let's do that. Whew. Aaron Nola, Kershaw. We, ooh, we got smacked. Jeez. And we lost the second game, too. We're about to get swept. So let's take on this quick manage game. Let's hope we don't get swept. That would be absolutely devastating. All right. All right. I had to pause mid home run with Cesar Hernandez because my dog started barking like crazy. And as you can see, we're up one nothing in the first. So let's keep it going. There we go. Okay. 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 Doing well. Come on. Some We couldn't score. We really didn't score there. That's unreal. Okay, we still have a lead though. So I'm not going to complain. We do have the lead. But one run is just not good enough. We need more. We definitely need more. That's why. Oh, man. What is going on? We're going to pinch hit. We're, we're kind of in a dangerous situation now. Double play, okay. Last six, five outs now. Okay, okay. Come on, Chris Bryant. Do it right here. Hit by pitch. Real Muto brings in two. Okay. Tie ball game. There we go. <sighs> Patances, 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 Patances. <sighs> Patances, are you kidding me? We get swept in the NLCS, which is very disappointing. The Yankees defeat the Dodgers. Man, that's a rough two seasons. First to get knocked out of the first round and then to get knocked out of the second round. But you know what? To be honest, the team is scary good. We're looking good for the future as well. And I'm actually going to leave it here because with the offseason rebuilds, I kind of want to do them really quickly. I only want to do one or two seasons because they're really trying to push for a winning team as quick as possible. And with nine, MLB 19 right around the corner, I don't want to dive too deep into a rebuild um, and then they kind of get stale once 19 comes out. So I want to keep this one at two. I hope you guys enjoyed it. It's a quick little, does Bryce Harper really make the team better? Do the Phillies take a winning mentality, a win now mentality, make some moves? Do they become a threat? And to be honest, they're not too far off. Obviously, these trades are pretty unrealistic. Um, but overall, when you look at the team, we, we made Chris Bryant as a new addition. 
outside of that not too much in the actual lineup the pitching we completely revamped and i think it worked a little bit better but that's really the biggest changes we made i think the phillies for the future they have the right pieces they just gotta play it right they really gotta focus on that pitching and i hope you guys enjoyed today's video if you did hit that like button down below subscribe if you're new and enjoyed the content and i'll catch you all in the next video peace mm -hmm.